Dear students, this is Pirzada Imran and let's today learn about the new topic that will be based on Pallavas and Cholakya dynasty, okay? So these are the other two uh, dynasties which we are going to learn today and uh, these dynasties are also based in the southern part of India. So this will be covering this part, okay? So last time when we were discussing Harsha or Harshwardhana, we discussed this line. What was this line? This was actually a river that was called Narmada, okay? So this Narmada uh, river was, you know, kind of set as a boundary between the Cholakya rulers, that was Ulksen II, and between Harsha, that's Harshwardhana, okay? So there was a pact and treaty. According to that pact or treaty, the both of them were not supposed to cross the boundary or cross the river and attack on each other's boundary, okay? So that is the importance of Narmada here. So I will erase this now. Now, so this part we already discussed, okay? This is where Harsha reigned. That is the northern part and some part of east, okay? And uh, northwest, okay? So this part we have covered. Now, the part that has remained is this part, okay? So at the same time when Harsha was ruling, around 6th century, okay? It was around 6th century that we are going to discuss this scenario that is in the south, okay? That is in the southern India, okay? So... Uh, as you can see in this map, this is the Chalukyas part, okay? And this is the Pallavas part, okay? This is denoted with orange color and this is denoted with yellow color. So, Chalukyas capital was Badami, okay? Just remember this. And Pallavas capital was Kanchipuram, okay? Right? Chalukya capital Badami and Pallavas capital Kanchipuram, okay? And you also can see another important region that was Venji, okay? Venji or Venji. What is the importance of these regions? I'll be discussing in this lecture, okay? So, I hope the map is clear, okay? And uh, now I will uh, tell you in detail about Pallavas and Chalukyas. So, these are actually two separate kingdoms, right? But why I'm discussing them in a uh, combined video? Because uh, when we discuss these two kingdoms, they are almost discussed at the same time because this whole discussion will be based on feud, okay? Or this whole discussion will be based on fights okay that were going on between these two kingdoms okay what type of fights what type of feuds and why these fights were happening that i'm going to discuss okay so first of all these two kingdoms okay these two kingdoms were near two major rivers okay and what were their uh, two major rivers the first river was krishna and second river was tungabhadra okay these were the two rivers and what was the importance of these rivers that these rivers uh, actually, ha, you know, where there, were, there are rivers, there is actually deposition, okay? And deposition means that there is the fertile soil that is lying here, okay? So, fertile soil, okay? And wherever there is fertile soil, there is huge cultivation and that area is considered to be economically rich, okay? And it was these two areas that were considered economically rich because there was fertile soil that was present there. One is Kaveri Delta, okay? And second is Raichur Dob, okay? Dob actually the word Dob means it means land between two rivers land between two rivers okay and who were these two rivers Krishna and Tungabhadra okay now the fertile soil is present there and this fertile soil uh, has to be cultivated okay and now there is constant fight between these two dynasties that's Pallavas and Chalukyas on this land on this fertile land now and what were the rulers that are involved in these fights and what was the reason behind it we are going to discuss okay so initial attack what do i mean by initial attack actually who launched the first attack it was from chalukya ruler okay and chalukya ruler you can see here in the map okay that's on the western part of southern india okay so so western part uh, or we can say uh, the chalukyas actually attacked and the chalukya ruler at that time was mahindra varman okay so the mahindra varman attacked okay um, attacked on pallavas okay mahindra varman attacked on pallavas and took this area of vanji from them okay so this is the first attack very important and where is vanji so vanji is this area okay so this area obviously lies in pallavas now chalukya ruler mahindra varman attacked this area and captured this area vanji okay and then this vanji was given to eastern chalukya ruler uh, okay vishnu vishnu varman i'll be discussing that how see chalukyas or chalukyas of badami uh, which they are generally known by so the chalukyas had actually three branches okay and the first branch was chalukyas of badami 
और चालुकियाज ऑफ वतापी ओके बदामी एंड वतापी इज वन एंड द सेम थिंग एंड दिस ब्रांच एक्चुअली इमर्ज अराउंड सिक्स सेंचुरी बी सी सिक्स सेंचुरी एंड दिस वॉज एक्चुअली यू नो फाउंडेड बाय नन अदर देन पुल्क सेन फर्स्ट ओके पुल्क सेन फर्स्ट ओके वतापी और बदामी ओके दिस वॉज फाउंडेड बाई पुल्क सेन फर्स्ट एंड देर एंड दिस ब्रांच इज ऑल्सो एज वन ऑफ द अर्लीएस्ट ओके अर्लीएस्ट ब्रांच ऑफ earliest branch of chalukyas okay then later uh, you know after the badamis there was this eastern branch okay and at that time it was ruled by vishnu varman okay and this is vanji that was given to this eastern branch added to it and it was till 11th century that eastern chalukyas were ruling this place okay and then later at the last there was this western chalukyas who actually were none but all but actually the descendants of badami chalukyas means the initial rulers okay now these initial rulers from these emerged this later branch that is the western chalukyas okay i hope i'm clear okay now this i already mentioned that watapi okay so what about watapi watapi was already founded by pulksen first and then um, during 6th century pulksen second ruled it okay so uh, this is around 6th century that pulksen second rules it and uh, i'll be telling you what happens uh, during 6th century where pulksen is ruling this place okay now uh later what happened this mahindra varman's son whose name was narsimha varman okay you know who is mahindra varman mahindra varman is actually uh, a ruler from pallavas okay a ruler from pallavas now his son his son narsimha varman actually who belongs to pallava dynasty he attacks badami because he wants to take revenge okay revenge of whom mahindra varman okay because as vanji was taken from them now uh, the revenge is to be there and this revenge is taken by his son narsimha varman and uh, the chalukya capital uh, uh, the chalukya capital what do i mean by that the, this badami actually was the capital of chalukya okay now this badami is attacked and mahindra varman's son narsimha varman takes it and here who was ruling at that time as i told you in 6th century pulksen second was ruling and he defeats or he defeats this pulksen second okay i hope i am clear okay now and uh, this narsimha varman defeats pulksen second in a battle that is called battle of mani mangalam okay battle of mani mangalam and after this battle of mani mangalam narsimha varman attains the title as watapi kondi why watapi kondi because as i told you that badami was also called as watapi and he now captured it that's why they gave the title to him as watapi kondi okay now so this is this is the controversial part okay now based on the chronology what were the rulers that came uh, um, in the chalukyas so that chronology was like this so pulksen right he was the founder okay he was the founder and another important point about him is that he is also the one who is supposed to have performed ashwamedh ashwamedh okay you know ashwamedh the horse sacrifice or going into detail you can learn it uh, in my previous videos what is ashwamedh so he is one who has performed ashwamedh now after pulksen first his son kirti varman came to rule okay now after kirti varman first after kirti varman first his brother mangalesha came to power not his son who, uh, who was kirti varman's son it was pulksen second but uh, instead of pulksen second mangalesha came to power who was the brother of kirti varman so b here denotes brother so mangalesha was the brother of kirti varman first now this mangalesha was killed by he was killed by killed by his nephew his nephew means his brother's son and who was his nephew it was pulksen second okay pulksen pulksen second reign is very important okay he is one of the most important kings now this pulksen second is actually the son of kirti varman and he is the nephew of mangalesha now this nephew kills uh his uncle and comes to power okay pulksen second now pulksen second was uh succeeded by his son vikram aditya first okay vikram aditya first and then after vikram aditya kirti varman second came to power who was kirti varman second he was the great grandson of vikram aditya okay now it is this kirti varman who will be later defeated by none other than dhanti durg okay who was dhanti durg i will mention this when we will be discussing rashtrakuta dynasty or rashtrakut dynasty which was a dynasty based on central india okay this is the dynasty which will came after this dynasty which will be discussing in the next video okay now as uh, i already told you this pulksen second becomes very important why because 
because of many incidents okay first is the battle with narsimha varman uh, you know i told you here that it was uh, battle of mahimanga uh, sorry battle of what was its name Bat battle of mani mangalam that he is famous because battle of mani mangalam was fought between pulksen second and narsimha varman okay and narsimha varman defeated pulksen second and took uh, uh, took badami from him okay now apart from that this pulksen second is also known by the name as iraya okay and this iraya name is mentioned in an inscription called eye hole inscription this eye hole inscription i have already taught you so this is also this can be seen in the previous videos okay now pulksen second also had a court poet his name was ravi kirti ravi kirti and uh, ravi kirti is uh, actually he um, he was a sanskrit poet okay and he wrote in sanskrit language okay now uh, this pulksen second was also a hindu and but it is believed that he tolerated okay tolerated both jainism and uh, buddhism okay he tolerated both jainism and buddhism okay now pulksen second uh there is another incident uh, that i have already told you in the previous lecture when i was discussing harishwardhana that he defeated harishwardhana okay he defeated harishwardhana when harishwardhana was trying to move further south okay okay now this harishwardhana defeated uh, sorry this pulksen defeated harishwardhana and then the narmada was set as the boundary okay so this is again pulksen second is famous for okay that is defeating pulks uh, harishwardhana okay or also called harsha okay now there is this traveler whose name is zuin zhang okay and this zuin zhang is supposed to have visited during the time of pulksen second in he is also uh, seen uh, um, seen praising him okay in many scripts okay now pallavas i have already mentioned what was important here but uh, you know for your uh, kind of curiosity that if there is something left in pallavas i will i would like to clear some of the points here that these pallavas actually uh, where you know th their actually origin is very you know obscure there is no clear evidence that from where these pallavas came okay but it is generally considered that after the demise of satvahanas okay you know uh, ikwa ik uh, ishku ishu ishwakus were the one who were built uh, on the ruins of satvahanas okay means uh, these satvahanas were replaced by ishwakus and it is believed that it is these ishwakus who were related or kind of replaced by these pallavas okay so they were based on the ruins of satvahanas if we can say directly okay now it means uh, satvanas replaced ishwakus and ishwakus were replaced by pallavas okay or uh, maybe i'm saying it wrong uh, ishwakus replaced satvanas and then pallavas replaced ishwakus okay now these pallavas actually established uh, you know their kingdom in this area that is called tondi mandalam okay tondi mandalam is very famous and it is directly related always to pallavas okay and uh, i already told you that their capital was kanchipuram okay and who is supposed to be the founder of uh, pallavas it is simha vishnu okay simha vishnu is believed to be the founder of uh, pallava dynasty okay and uh, the major king that came was mahindra varman okay and uh, mahindra varman's uh, what is his contribution uh, he was uh, as i already told you that he was defeated by uh, mahindra varman was defeated by pulksen okay and then uh, this also mahindra varman is actually a great patron of art and architecture uh, that is exemplified by this that he was famous for this manda gapatu architecture or manda gapatu architecture and in this uh, manda gapatu architecture there is this use of uh, stone stone and mortar okay stone and mortar and he is supposed to have built a temple with this method and that's why he took uh, took the title of vichitra chitta okay vichitra chitta so vichitra chitta is the title given to mahindra varman first okay mahindra varman first now after mahindra varman his son narsimha varman came to power and then he, or we can say he was the major king after him and then at last narsimha varman second came okay now uh, some of uh, i can't say that you know it is the minor one but it is the major one actually okay and this you will be discussing uh, separately in art and culture okay and what is this that pallavas and cholakyas both they are known for their temple architecture or they are very famous for art and architecture okay as you can clearly i'll give you a hint that you know kind of highlight that pallavas were the one who initiated rock cut architecture and that rock cut architecture was later uh, you know uh, reformed into dravida temple architecture which you'll be learning in art and culture okay and then also chalukyas initiated visara temple architecture okay so these are the uh, some of the major temple architectures that are known um, you know that are very famous in the southern uh, temple architecture and that you will be discussing in the art and culture okay and uh, i i'm done with this lecture now i hope i have covered everything and you have understood everything and uh, i wish you all the best for your exams 
uh, i hope you are learning from my videos and do comment and uh, um, you know tell me where i need to improve or do i need to go slow or faster okay uh, so that i can set the tone accordingly thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next lecture